Hi, it's Chef Rick, and today I'm making a whiskey barbecue pulled brisket. Hi, it's Chef Rick, and today I'm making barbecue pulled brisket. So the first thing we're going to do is toast the spices. So I've used uh, panch puron, which is an Indian five spice, black peppercorns, and mustard seeds. Panch puron you can find pretty much in any supermarket. It's an Indian five spice mix, and if you can't find it, just use things like coriander seeds or whatever. Uh, but once you've got it in the house, you'll always use it. In that pan, you've got no oil, and you've got it on a medium heat, so you're literally just toasting them, just so, they, just so it really brings out the aroma. It's not so smell. Once that's done, put them into a mortar and pestle, along with smoked paprika, cayenne pepper, um, and demerara sugar, light demerara sugar, and grind it to a fine powder. So you can't really do this wrong. Just put a bit of time and effort into it and that's what you're going to get at the end of this. Just a nice fine powder and that's going to be our spice mix. There you go. Freshly made spice mix to go on the brisket. Now that is a piece of brisket <clears throat> unwrapped. When you buy it from a butcher's it's usually going to they'll wrap it up for you. Once it's unwrapped, that's the inside. What you do is you score the meat. Scoring is simply cutting through a thin layer on the top. I do it a bit of a crisscross pattern like that. And now I rub the spice mix all over it. By the way, any spice mix you want at this point, um, as long as it's got some sugar in there, and as long as it's got some sort of spice, like the, the peppercorns or whatever, you can really mix and match and do whatever you like. But this is mine. And now I'm going to just rub it all into the meat, both sides. Whilst I'm doing that, <clears throat> I'll say, uh, please, if you like these clips, can you please click subscribe at the bottom? Uh, it just really helps me out. You'll see the new videos that I'm doing each week. I'm probably going to ask you that once more before this whole thing has ended, but, you know, it's the done thing. Cover the, uh, the brisket in that spice mix. All over. Use every bit of it. The whole thing covered. And once you've done that, roll it up back the way it started. That's probably how you got it. And if it didn't start like that, just roll it up. Now tie it with butcher's twine. You do have to use butcher's twine. I was going to use string for this and I just Googled it and it was like, no string has got, you know, chemicals on it. It can burn in the oven. So I went to try and find where I buy this butcher's twine. Of course you can buy tons of it online, but I just went to the butcher Asked him, can I buy it? Of course, they're not bothered. They're so friendly. They're just like, yeah, yeah, how much you need? They gave it to me. So yeah, go and ask your butcher for some butcher's twine if you don't have some already. And if you do have some already, well, use that. Um, tie it up the, the way that it was rolled. I've also tied it uh, the other way as well, just to make it nice and tight, just to make sure this thing doesn't uh, fall apart when I'm roasting it. And that's it, that's how I tied it up. Quite neat, if you ask me. Now we're gonna wrap it in cling film, put it in a fridge and let it just relax overnight. Let those flavors uh, go into the meat. Just leave it in the fridge overnight. That's it wrapped up, bosh, in the fridge. Here's the next day, and there we go. Now I invented this, I thought, oh, how clever am I? Look at this, I've, I've, uh, you see there's like a clip at the top holding the rack onto the tray. And then I put the meat on it and I thought, what am I doing? It's absolutely stupid idea. So I completely quickly binned that one off um, and instead went for something, because we're, we're gonna cook this piece of meat now for like six hours. So I went for something much more appropriate. First thing I've done here is uh, slicing onions just to make a trivet. A trivet is something that keeps meat away from the bottom of a pan when you're roasting it. And if you've seen the glazed ham video, you'll know exactly, you'll know all about trivets. Um, but you see, what, those onions are a trivet. They are separating the meat from the bottom of the pan. This is going in the oven, even though it's on a very, very low heat. It's in there for like six hours, so you do not want it to be catching or sticking to the bottom of the pan. Uh, and then beef stock just a homemade beef stock, just poured all over the bottom, just enough to cover the ovens, uh, the onions, before it goes in the oven, that's why I said on a oven. <laughs> um, 
again probably could have sped this bit up but i will say this will be the second and last time i ask you please click subscribe if you like my videos i do three a week it really helps me out uh and now using tinfoil i made a kind of special <laughs> coating for this i was quite proud of this uh this coating i made for the for the brisket you've probably got or you might have a roasting pan that has a lid on it so it's not going to touch the meat but anyway i'm i i constructed this out of tin foil now you're thinking ah richard there's a little gap in there no see i put an extra bit of tin foil on there and i created that uh, lovely tent the meat's inside carefully put it in the oven on a low heat all the instructions are in the um, description here and here we are six hours later and that's what we're dealing with first time i saw it i thought oh dear that's got to be burnt look at it and find, oh yeah, that's why I left that clip in earlier on. You see why I why I did it. That stupid invention I came up with six and a half hours ago. I, it uh, came into use there when I needed to um, let the meat chill. The pan juices straight into a saucepan. We certainly don't need that many at all. But here's uh, just a good thing to show you. See all the fat on the top there. Put an ice cube in. This works with anything. However, you well, any any roasting meats that you've got, any any um, any roasting juices that you've got in the bottom of the pan that have got that layer of fat on there put an ice cube in uh, i you probably don't need to be as delicate as i'm being here you can just drop an ice cube into it uh, but i like to run the ice cube all around the top just so i know it's covered and um, there you go see and now i'm letting it bob about uh, do that for you know no not long at all and look what happens all of the fat will just stick to the ice cube i'm surprised this is not kind of much more widely known in fact maybe all you watching knew this already i had no idea but all the fat yeah that's Mingy, uh, is stuck to the ice and you get a lovely clear roasting juices so we don't need much of that but anyway just a nice little top tip the um, brisket is now cooled and I was looking at this thinking oh dear this is gonna be burnt this is gonna be a <laughs> drier solid mass I took the string off Looks great there, doesn't it? Started to pull it apart, and I went, "Oh yes, yes!" I was pulling it apart, and it's soft and it's pink, and it was just so, so soft. Look at that! I quickly, I bin the fork off in a minute. I was like, "No, pointless, absolutely pointless." Get your fingers in there, and this whole thing just fell apart. Amazing, absolutely amazing. Soft, moist in the middle. Um, just look how it just falls apart. Totally falls apart. It's an amazing you know cut of meat for for doing this sort of super slow roast with and that's it just pull it apart with my fingers and, uh, and that's without it being obvious when something says pulled pork pulled brisket pulled chicken whatever it might be pulled is this process here where you are literally pulling it all apart uh, with your fingers So there you go, the pulled brisket. Okay, you could eat the brisket how it was, but what we're gonna do is make a barbecue sauce. So in a saucepan, we add the red wine vinegar, and we boil that, bring it to the boil, it's sort of on a medium to high heat, till it's reduced by about half. <clears throat> then we're gonna add the light brown sugar, whiskey, uh, a bourbon whiskey. This was a Maker's Mark. Uh, sad to pull my Maker's in there, but it was what it was. And some Coke. Could have poured a whiskey and Coke in as well when I look back at this and think about it. Tomato ketchup from the homemade tomato ketchup video. Uh, link is in the top there. I mix that all around. Obviously, the ketchup thickened everything. <clears throat> And you've got a thin-ish syrup. A few dashes of uh, Worcester sauce and some of the beef uh, roasting juices that we used earlier on, or that we got earlier on from the uh, the pan juices, the, the the beef pan juices. Call it what you want. Um, and now we're going to cook that on a sort of low to medium heat. 
stirring all the time, you'll notice it thickens. You know how we, we test whether something's thickening. First of all, if the steam coming off, that steam is water. Water coming off it is thickening the sauce just naturally. Um, let that simmer away. Keep stirring it. Keep, uh, keep running your spoon along the bottom of the pan. Uh, and when it is not obviously too too thick at all, you still want it to be liquid because now we're going to add all of that brisket into the um, into the pan with it. That's going to soak up some of the uh, well, a lot of the of the sauce. That's why you don't want it to be too thick. You still want it to be a bit liquid. You can see that it's still liquid in there. This is absolutely perfect. And also, don't forget, you can just keep uh, keep this on the on the hob for as long as you want and. Um, naturally it's going to steam and it's going to boil so the sauce is going to thicken anyway um, but you can see as I'm just stirring this around as I say in so many of my videos you can imagine the smell at this point it's absolutely amazing it's like a whiskey barbecue sauce full of beefy brisket it's just ridiculous uh, so yeah all I'm doing there I mean I don't know what I'm doing there it looks like I'm teasing the thing there you see as I'm, see as I'm um, there as you scrape around you can then see the bottom of the pan and it's not just instantly filling back up with liquid again so it's kind of like a, a thickening a thickening sauce thickening brisket mix that's what it looks like look at that jeez louise look at it imagine that on a sandwich or on a burger or on a hot dog or in a, in a roll or i make these fancy little canapes out of it and gorgeous absolutely gorgeous um I spread it out in this container for no other reason than just let it let it cool, kind of let it cool evenly. And that's it, that's pulled barbecue brisket in a whiskey barbecue sauce, uh, or just pulled brisket, whatever. Thank you so, so much for watching the video. I really do appreciate it. If you like it, please click like. Uh, can you click subscribe as well and then you'll see the other videos that I do each week. Once more, thank you so much for watching. Um, see you again.